Guys and good morning out there to um, cyber world. Thank you so much for being on my channel. I thank God for waking me up this morning in my rightful mind. He has kept me alive through the course of the night and I've seen it fit to have me remain in the land, in the land of the living. Many people went to their bed last evening and there are no more. So I give God thanks that he has found favor in me and um, desire for me to still be here so that I can proclaim the word of God. I can be a witness to others of what he has done for me. I am very grateful and happy that my God has given me another day. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we look to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of love. We thank you for life. We thank you, Lord, that we have somewhere warm to sleep. We're not out in the cold, dear Father. I pray even now you'll protect those who are. Oh, Lord, embrace us with your love. We just praise you. We adore you. We worship you. We magnify you. You are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Breathe upon us the fresh aroma of your Holy Spirit, dear Father, and help us to be who you want us to be. Hear and answer our prayers. Even now, Lord, that I go into this, this uh, devotion, I pray, God, that you will inspire my heart. Please, Master, help me to be who you want me to be and that lord i will be saved remember those in the group dear father the 40 days prayer and fast prayer and um, devotion in preparation for the second coming oh father we ask that you will direct our path you will remember us you will guide us and protect us from evil arms and danger and that we might be saved when you come in jesus name amen and amen okay now I'm gonna go to the, the theme song that I like to sing before I, I go into the the devotion open mine eyes that I may see oh God I pray that you will open our eyes open our ears open all that needs to be open so we can worship you Lord we can adore you we give you the praise and the honor and the glory that you alone deserve in jesus name we pray amen Open mine eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall hand clasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine. Oh, my higher that I may hear. Voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave not fall on my head, everything falls will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine hair, the Spirit divine, 
Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children just to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine heart, illumine me, speak, breathe divine. I really cannot express how much I love this song and how much I adore the word of the song. Open mine eyes that I may see. Just glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, Lord, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open mine eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Oh, mercy. Then it says, Open mine ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my hair, everything falls will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, by will to see. Open mine ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Then the last time they say, Open my mouth and let me bear. Gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare. Love with thy children thus to share. Then silently now I wait for thee. Ready my God thy will to see. Open my heart, illumine me, spirit divine. Okay, today is day number 28. Day number 28 reading that I am doing right now under the caption, Christ gives the victory. Christ gives the victory. Until the Christian comes to understand and experience what it means to let Christ give him his victory. He will not experience the consistently obedient life he desires. In today's devotional, I will present how to let Christ live out his victorious life in you. When you come to understand and experience this truth, your Christian life will never again be the same. Instead of a life of sporadic obedience and broken promises to God, you will, in time, experience a life of victory through Christ over every temptation and sin that Satan brings your way. Is such a consistency obedience life really possible? Can we truly have victory over every temptation and sin in our life? That is the kind of life God desires us to live. Knowing this, that our whole man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should know we should not serve sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that he should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield yourselves 
members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And that's Romans chapter 6, verses 11 through 14. Helen White agrees. He who has not sufficient faith in Christ to believe that he can keep him from sinning has not the faith that will give him an entrance into the kingdom of God. Manuscript, page 161. 1897 or manuscript 161 19, 1897 page 9 so what is the answer to how we can live a consistently victorious Christian life the answer is to let Jesus live out his life of victory in us a truth taught throughout the Bible I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Psalm 16, verse 8. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trust in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Isaiah chapter 66, 26, verses 3 and 4. That's Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can he, except he abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. That's John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5. Christ's mind was filled with pure let me go that back again. Christ's mind was filled with pure, holy, virtuous thoughts. If we have asked Christ to live in us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if we believe he does, and if we believe he will manifest his love, his pure, holy, virtuous thought in our lives, he will do just that. It is a matter of faith. Believing he will truly manifest himself in our lives. Paul recognized this fact when he wrote, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 all right that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith Ephesians chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 in order to experience true abiding in Christ, you must realize that Jesus does literally abide in you. He said that he does, and you can believe him. This happens as you daily receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it will it seeth him not 
neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. John chapter 14 verses 16 through 18. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he has given us. 1 John chapter 3 verse 24. With Jesus living in you, you have his mind. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16 we have his love joy peace patience gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance all the fruits fruit of the spirit but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Through Jesus living in us, via the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have his likes and dislikes, his pure thoughts, his forgiveness, the list could go on and on. Every virtue of Christ is in you through Christ abiding in you. How in the Christ, how is the Christian to apply this fruit? Simply put the steps. Simply put, the steps are these: when you become aware of a temptation to sin, one. Choose to turn your mind immediately away from the temptation. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Secondly, believe that the power of your sinful natures Point number two, how is the Christian to apply this truth? Simply put, the steps are these. When you become aware of a temptation to sin, the second thing to do is believe that the power of your sinful nature's attraction to the temptation to control you is broken. Believe that. Believe that the power of your sinful nature's attraction to the temptation to control you is broken. Point number three, believe Jesus is in you and ask him to manifest his virtue in you in relation to the temptation. Be specific. So if it's a temptation to commit adultery or to have um, immoral sexual um, behavior ask God believe Jesus in is in you and ask him to manifest his virtue in you in relation to the temptation as I said be specific <coughs> fourthly believe that he will manifest himself in that manner rest in that belief and don't fight the temptation when we fight the temptations, we are actually 
focusing on it and trying to resist it in our own strength rather than looking to Jesus for the victory. I love that. Wherefore, seeing we are also are we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despite the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrew chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And then the last thing to do is to thank him for deliverance. He has just given you. Last thing. Let me wrap that over again. So, how is a Christian to apply this truth? The truth that, you know, the Spirit, he says, through Jesus living in us, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have his likes and his dislike, his pure thoughts, his forgiveness. The list could go on and on. Every virtue of of Christ, of Christ is in you, through Christ abiding in you. How is the Christian to apply this truth? Simply put, the steps are these. When you become aware of a temptation to sin, one, choose to turn your mind immediately away from the temptation. So if you are tempted to have sexual intercourse with somebody's wife or you know somebody, someone outside of wedlock, put take the temptation immediately away from your mind. Don't dwell on it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, then think on these things. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. The second thing to do is believe that the power of your sinful nature, as attraction to the temptation to control you, is broken. Because Jesus lives inside of you, inside of me. Thirdly, we must believe that Jesus is in us and ask him to manifest his virtue in us in relation to the temptation. Be specific. So if the desire come to commit adultery, ask Jesus, Jesus, please manifest yourself within me and help me to resist the temptation of fornication <coughs> fourthly believe that he will manifest himself in that manner rest in that belief and don't fight the temptation when we fight the temptation we are actually focusing on it and trying to resist it in our own strength rather than looking to Jesus for the victory and the Bible says in um, Hebrew chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right end of the throne of God. Hebrew 12, 1 and 2. And finally, step number 5. Thank God, thank Jesus for the deliverance he has just given you. Praise God. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the salvation made so clear. Thank you, Father. For the steps of victory to any temptation made so clear we appreciate the, the revelation and the inspiration that you have given this pastor Lord and as we take those five steps dear father 
we pray that we will become more than conqueror through Christ who strengthens us. Live out your life within us, Father God, and help us to be like you, to think like you, to act like you, to pray like you, to resist temptation like you did. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the, the mouth of God. It is written, so Lord, help us to dig deeper in your word so that we can use your word as a standard against the evil one. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a great and wonderful day. Looking forward to seeing you, to hearing you, or, or, and we are praying for you. Walk with God and let him walk with you. Be blessed and be a blessing. We love you. I love you in Jesus' wonderful, worthy name. Amen.